Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and welcome to what I found to be three helpful metaphors for your depressed clients. Simple but hopeful ways to talk about depression. So depression is a scary diagnosis. This is what Angela, who was a client, said to me some years ago, reflecting on her life. And she said, at first I was relieved to know that it was a disease because it meant it wasn't my fault, it was my chemical imbalance, which I'd inherited from my mother. But it was a terrifying thing to find out that depression could come back at any time for the rest of my life, she said. Angela had been on antidepressants for five years, but lately she'd noticed there was a pattern to her moods. When she ran regularly, she felt much better, and after a period of feeling very anxious, the depression would come back. This led her to question the very nature of the disease that she'd been diagnosed with. Depression is not a disease, but a metaphor. I've worked with many clients like Angela over the years, who've understandably felt upset to hear that they have an illness that they're told may at any stage suddenly reappear and needs to be treated with lifelong psychotropic drugs that they've somehow born faulty. Others find some solace in hearing depression as a disease. As Angela described it, initially it took the onus off her and onto the chemical imbalance she was told that she was born with, reassuring her that being depressed was not her fault, which is true, no one wants to be depressed. But in fact, although depression is a state of mind that significantly affects energy levels in the body, there's no real evidence that it, it has a biological cause most of the time beyond psychological learning or temporary response to one of or more of life setbacks. So with no real hard evidence for a physical cause, we can see that the idea of depression as disease is itself nothing more than a metaphor, but one that's often assumed to be literally true. And this is problematic for a client's recovery because illnesses or conditions imply difficulty, outside agency, potentially long-term trouble and increased likelihood of relapse. So the risk is that the depression is a disease metaphor might cause our clients to be more passive and less likely to take the steps that would make a difference, to give them back the power, so to speak. So how can we use more positive metaphors to help our clients recover from depression? Here are three powerful, hopeful metaphors that you can use to help your depressed clients gain a fresh perspective on their experience. So number one, flat battery. I've talked to my depressed clients, both in and out of hypnosis, about having a flat battery. I hear it's called a discharge battery across the Atlantic. So Angela, for example, was a perfectionist and she obsessed over her work not being good enough, although she always received high marks at university. I explained to her that the endless negative focus of depressed people during the day creates a backlog of negative arousal that REM sleep has to discharge. So the brain responds by generating more REM, rapid eye movement or dream sleep, at the cost of less restful, recuperative, slow wave sleep. So depressed people, because they've dreamed too much and not have enough slow wave sleep, wake up feeling exhausted, making them want to sleep more, during which they dream even more. So it's a vicious cycle. So the worst thing a depressed person can do is sleep for longer in the mornings. So to Angela, I said something like this. Depression is really like a battery that's run out of power. All that firing off of the REM response at night tires out the system, meaning that rather than getting rested from your sleep, it's been tiring you out. As you begin to worry less and ruminate less and relax more during the day, you'll quickly begin to dream less at night and your energy levels will normalize. And the extra deep slow wave sleep you'll have as a result will immediately start to recharge your battery so that you'll begin to awaken with renewed motivation and energy and confidence. So this explanation made real intuitive sense to Angela and I found it does with all my depressed clients who find it frustrating that they wake up exhausted and don't feel rested from their sleep. Number two, boat on the river. 
I like to normalize and de-scarify depression as much as possible. If someone has had a bereavement or been through a divorce or perhaps got overwhelmed at work and then become depressed, I might suggest that carrying on as normal wouldn't be natural or even useful under those circumstances. I might say that um, shutting down energy for a while may even be serving a valuable purpose for the client. So if we imagine a boat going along a river which has many different streams and smaller rivers running off it, if the way ahead for this boat is suddenly blocked, you don't just try and carry on as if nothing's happened. The boat needs to stop for a while in order to reorientate. It needs to do nothing for a bit. Eventually you may decide you can remove the blockage and continue the way you were going, or you might begin to see an alternate route you can take. But whatever happens, you need to stop for a while in order to make sense of things and decide what to do next. And this is, of course, what depressed people need to do sometimes if they've had life-changing events. Clients find this metaphor helpful because it identifies depression as a natural response to feeling stuck until they can get unstuck. It implies that this is a passing experience, which is not their fault, but not something they were, they were born with. And at the same time, it offers a sense of hope for the future without piling on the guilt for not having done anything. They need to stop for a while. Number three, flying high. Because it is powered by strong emotion, depression tends to induce black and white or all or nothing or absolutist, as it's sometimes called, thinking, kind of extremist thought. If success is only 99%, then the whole thing has been a disaster, that kind of thing. So for example, a depressed person may feel that to get well, they need to feel absolutely great or completely happy ecstatic all the time, that any down days must mean the depression is completely black again. Okay. I like to challenge this kind of utopianism indirectly. So, you know, you know, we all go up and down a little bit without becoming depressed, and that's fine. We all go up and down a bit naturally. When you're traveling in a plane, the plane is constantly going up and down a little bit, but you don't really notice it, because for the most part, the plane is traveling forward in the right direction. And that can be the same for our clients. And I might illustrate what I mean by this with my hand going up and down ever so slightly. So introducing these metaphors into your work can be done quite naturally and you can drop them almost casually into conversation with your clients. I used all three of these metaphors with Angela, both in and out of hypnosis. And she began to see how being a perfectionist and a warrior had been affecting her sleep and her REM cycle and how her thinking styles leading to anxiety and then depression had been working on her. We worked together to find ways she could relax and stay calm, and dissipate the uh, stress hormone that besets depressed people. And she found that she wasn't frightened of depression anymore because she could knock it on the head if it showed up again, as she put it. Now that was a metaphor I like to hear. So I hope you found that useful and if you did please hit like and subscribe and if you want to hear when my next video is published hit the notification bell below this video. I'm Mark Tyrell of Uncommon Knowledge and if you'd like to subscribe to my email newsletter you can find it over at unk.com slash blog that's unk.com slash blog and thanks for watching.